Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Hakuna Matata. It means... <laughs> Welcome back to ENN for the week of February 6, 2013. This week, the Crisis 3 beta has launched. Dyad, Halo 1 through 3, and King of Fighters have been possibly leaked on a Steam database. Sony announced an end to the working relationship with PlayStation All Stars developer. Superbot. Scott Pilgrim DLC finally gets an, a release date after three years of the game being out. And Razer and esports company e, EG, or Evil Geniuses, get a sponsorship announcement. Crisis 3 beta is currently running until February 15th on the PC and Xbox, and potentially the PS3. And it looks absolutely gorgeous, dude. Especially on the PC, cranking the graphics up, it is one of the most beautiful and graphically impressive games I've ever played. However, the beta is absolutely just trash as far as optimization goes on the PC. Frame rates go just all over the place, it doesn't matter. I even cranked my settings down to low, and I was still just getting frame stuttering every now and then and things like that, and I'm certainly not on the low end PC. I would consider my PC pretty high end, and yet the frame rates were just all over the place. Sometimes I'd have a constant 60 FPS, other times it'd be like 20 to 40, just like slowing down and speeding up and slowing down, and it, it's crazy. And, but it still looks great. As far as the gameplay goes, it's really just, to me, it's the same crisis gameplay, which also means that I get bored of it pretty quickly. The one-hit melee just kind of drives me insane, and I don't want anything to do with it because I really don't want to be in a gunfight and then just suddenly a guy swing like three feet from me and kill me instantly. And the melee really just drives me insane and you die really quick. The gameplay of Crisis 2 and this one now just... Not all that fun to me, but you can check out the beta free and open till the 15th on, again, Xbox and PC, potentially PS3, although I cannot say that for certain. A recent NeoGAF forum post has revealed some potential new additions to the Steam library of PC games, which include some very unexpected titles. None of these have been confirmed aside from one, but there's a huge possibility weighing in on a lot of them. These games include the King of Fighters collections, the original Halo trilogy, both 1, 2, and 3, as well as a game called Dyad, and then Fez and a few others. Some games have been announced as absolutely not happening, some games have pretty much been confirmed already, and the de developer behind Dyad has actually announced that, due to this re revelation, has actually announced that the game will be coming out on Steam in March. He did not want to announce it yet, but this thread kind of pulled it out of him, and he certainly didn't want to lie to his potential customers. As far as Halo goes, Microsoft has announced that they do not currently have any plans of releasing any Halo titles on Steam, but that really doesn't mean anything at all. That just means that they're not ready for an announcement yet. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's not happening. And it would be an interesting move considering they just disable or they're about to disable the servers for Halo 2 on the PC. So unless they're moving it with Steam somehow or something like that, and we haven't heard anything at all about a Halo 3 being developed for the PC. So a lot of people are excited for that, but we're probably going to be hugely disappointed. Sony has announced an end to the working relationship with PlayStation All Star developer Superbot. They both parties, Sony and Superbot, have praised PlayStation All-Star, saying that they're both proud of the work and that they will continue to support the game and produce the promised DLC. Um, Sony has said that the DLC will be handled by Santa, Santa Monica Studios from now on and that the game, for the most part, will not be in Superbot's hands. But they're not, you know, shutting down Superbot by any means. Superbot says that they are still per pursuing projects that they love and they'll enjoy and still going to develop games and 
foot games out there, they're just no longer working with Sony, and this is neither party have led to any sort of negative connotation to the end of the relationship, they're just no longer working together, so if when you get DLC from PlayStation All-Stars, it's going to be the hands of God of War developer Santa Monica Studios. Scott Pilgrim is a 2D sprite-based fighter game that came out on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and potentially PC in 2010. It was announced in 2009 and came out in 2010. I actually remember watching Sly Fox Hound play it a long, long time ago. That's how I found his channel, followed his channel for a little bit before he got big, and actually played with him a little bit um, from having watched him play that game. So the game's been out forever, but they've only recently announced the DLC. The DLC was originally talked about coming out fall 2012, and then it got pushed back to December 2012, and now it's been officially given a release date of Wednesday, February 6, 2013, which should be today if you're watching this. And yeah, it was delayed after it was delayed like two days after they were given accusations of stealing sprites from some Sonic Game Boy Advance game and then the DLC got delayed for fine-tuning, so people are kind of assuming that they stole the sprites. Uh, but the DLC is supposed to add online multiplayer co-op, as well as adding Wallace Wells, Scott's roommate, as a playable character. Why it took three years for this to come out, I have no idea, but it's still kind of interesting. I still have the game on my PlayStation 3, and I may go give it a go once that comes out. The, Release date is only for the Xbox Live Arcade version. They have not officially announced their release date for the PlayStation 1 yet. Gaming accessory company Razer and esports company Evil Geniuses have announced a sponsorship agreement that could last a very long time. Evil Geniuses being an esports organization that started back in 1999, they have agreed that Razer will be the primary supplier of all gaming accessories for Evil Geniuses tournaments and anything to do with them. They're going to use them at the tournaments, they're going to, like, anytime Evil Geniuses recommends products, it's going to be Razer products, and Razer's going to be coming out with some EG branded gaming products specifically for members of those tournaments and things like that. That will be an interesting partnership. That is probably good for both sides to have that, and actually in a press conference, CEO of Razer declared Evil Geniuses to be the, one of the best gaming organizations that he has ever experienced and worked with, and that's pretty cool. Um, MLG obviously has Astros being one of their main product sponsorships, so obviously each company needs their own. And with MLG actually probably declining pretty soon with Halo not being supported, Call of Duty professionally being kind of boring, I kind of see these smaller organizations coming up, and so they're going to need solid sponsors, and Razer certainly want to go with, so that'll be interesting to watch. Thank you for watching this week's ENN. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any good tips or sources for gaming news, leave them in the section below. If there's anything interesting you thought about this week's news, also leave that in the comment section below. Be sure you leave a like and a favorite as this helps this show out a lot and tell your friends. Again, thank you for watching. Have a nice day and I'll talk to you guys next week on ENN.